today I want to take a look at electric fields. And to do that, I want to take a look back at something we're a little bit more familiar with, and that is gravity and gravitational fields. So if we take a look at something like the Earth, the force by gravity pulls any mass that we place near the Earth towards the Earth, according to Newton's law of universal gravitation. And while you've probably seen and used this equation quite a bit, the idea of a gravitational field isn't something that comes up all too often. And that's because, in physics, we typically refer to the gravitational field around the Earth as something else. The acceleration due to gravity. See, this equation can be rearranged. And it's this term right here, which we refer to more commonly as the acceleration due to gravity. Which here, on the surface of the Earth, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And we can show the magnitude and direction of the acceleration due to gravity using arrows. And these arrows show that regardless of where you are on the surface of the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is always inward toward the center of the Earth. Now given this function, the farther away a mass is placed from the Earth, the weaker the force by gravity is going to be. And we can show that reduction in acceleration due to gravity around the Earth by showing the arrows that are farther away from the Earth as being shorter. So what we've done here is we've created a sort of map which shows the acceleration due to gravity in both its magnitude and direction in space around the Earth. And we call this map the gravitational field. And in a similar manner, we can map out the electric field around charges, showing not the gravitational force around them, but the electric force around them. Now you'll remember, the electric field is given by Coulomb's law. Where K is Coulomb's constant, Q is the charge of each particle in question, and R is the distance between the particles. And much like with gravity, we can rearrange this equation. And this term in parentheses is what we call the strength of the electric field. And that electric field strength is measured in newtons per coulomb. And while the electric field may be a little bit hard to wrap your head around, I want you to realize this term for the electric field is simply relating the magnitude of the electric force, which is going to act on a charge, to the amount of charge which that charge possesses. Much in the same way, the acceleration due to gravity relates the force by gravity to the mass of an object which has been placed in a gravitational field. And just like with a gravitational field, we can map out the electric force around a charge. Now, unlike the gravitational force, which can only pull two masses together, the electric force can cause two charges to be attracted to one another or repel one another. And so because of this, we have to be a little bit careful in how we draw our electric field. So there's a convention which we adopt, and that convention is a little bit arbitrary. But the convention is, we always show the electric field as showing the direction in which a positive charge will be pushed or pulled. So if we were to place a positive charge anywhere close to this larger positive charge, it would in turn be pushed away from this large central charge, because according to Coulomb's law, like charges repel. So we show the electric field as acting away from this positive charge, and we're also able to show that as a test charge is placed farther and farther away from the central charge, the electric field is going to be weaker and weaker. And the convention holds true when we show the electric field around this negative charge as well. If we were to place a positive test charge anywhere around this central charge, it would be drawn inward toward this central negative charge, so we show the arrows as acting inward. Now one thing I want to point out is that as these electric field lines get closer together, that's effectively saying the electric field is stronger. And so oftentimes what you'll see is people draw electric field lines not as segments as though I've done here, but as continuous lines and the magnitude or strength of the electric field is simply given by how close those lines are drawn. So really what I want you to take away from this is that the electric field is not all that scary of an idea or that scary of a quantity. 
reuse it in finding the electric force, much in a similar way that we use the acceleration due to gravity to find the force by gravity on an object. But how and why the electric field is so important, we'll take a look at it some other time. And on that note, that's all for now. Thank you.